We get to talk story about an important project, important to Hawaii, important to the music industry, important to our culture. We're talking about, of course, Eddie Kamai. With me is Eddie's wife, Myrna Kamai. Uh, we have Kapena Shim with us, and we have Lily Noy Andrews. And Myrna, you will go ahead and kind of allow uh, tell us how they're integrated into this project but it is eddie kamai's songbook and before we dive into the songbook i want to mention eddie kamai we're talking about uh songwriter uh performer uh hawaii recording artist lifetime achievement award winner national endowment of the arts national heritage fellow uh, filmmaker he has done so many things to forward our culture over the years and this continues that celebration of all the things that he is. What is the Eddie Kamai Songbook? The Eddie Kamai Songbook is entirely digital online, and it's going to be launched for the first time this Sunday in a celebration at the Royal Hawaiian Center. And then everybody will be able to go to eddiekamaisongbook.org and get the songbook free. Okay, so this is an event that people can come and go to live in person. Live in person, music all day, totally free. Okay, is it virtual at all? It is virtual on Facebook from Royal Hawaiian Center. Okay, we'll dive into that uh, coming up in just a little bit. Talk about these two that are with us right now, Lily Noy and Kapena. I kind of have to start talking about them by starting how this songbook began with the fact that um, I was giving songs to musicians after Eddie passed because they wanted to know some of the songs that he had done. And when I was talking to Chancellor Manette Benham, she goes, why don't you do a songbook? Well, Kapena Shim um, has been our archivist for nine years. Wow. And he also has a full-time job at UH uh, Manoa in the Hawaiian section of Hamilton Library. And so he was a natural choice to become part of this team. And then Manette told us Lilinoi Andrews, who's fluent in Hawaiian, who has great research abilities, would be the other essential person in this team to make the Eddie Kamai songbook, A Musical Journey, become a reality. Okay, so Kapen, I'm gonna start with you for a couple of moments. Being that you've been the archivist, uh, it's been an incredible journey. You've been able to see, uh, understand, feel what it's been like to be not only involved in the life of Eddie Kamai, but all the things that are integrated with that. True? Talk about that yeah, for a couple yeah, moments. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I mean, I actually, honestly, when, when, when I got a text message from Maynette, um, you know, do, do you want to work with Eddie Kamai? You know, I, I, I honestly didn't know much about Eddie Kamai. And she says, oh, you know, he's close with your family. He, he knew your grandpa. So I go, oh, interesting. So that weekend, I got his book, and I got the 10 documentaries, and I watched all of them. And I read the whole book. And at the end of that documentary, I was really struck because um, I, I, I was able to, to kind of see uh, my, my grandfather in that. I was able to see um, our auntie in that. And I was just really struck by Eddie's story, the, the story of Eddie not growing up, or growing up not, not playing Hawaiian music, not wanting to play Hawaiian music, but then his journey to sort of finding Hawaiian music and finding teachers that helped him understand Hawaiian music and then finding... Um, you know, filmmaking as a vehicle to kind of ex explain and share music. So I just was really drawn to to Eddie and his story and just that arc because I was always just amazed that how can a man like Eddie, who is known for his music, grow up not even wanting to play Hawaiian music? How did that happen? Um, and that songbook really dives into that into that story. Which is really kind of interesting when you talk about things from an Olelo Hawaii perspective because that means that there was a little bit of a disconnection, taking into consideration that Eddie's grandmother, if I'm correct, was also in the court of King David Kalaakoa. That's, that's correct. And in fact, his grandmother composed the song Kananaka. Kananaka. And he didn't know that yeah. until he did research for one of his 10 documentaries, Lahaina, mm -hmm. and found out through, was it Emma Sharp, who ended up 
being his grandmother's first and only hula student, that that song was composed by his grandmother. And I think that was part of Eddie's awakening to continued awakening to Hawaiian language, Hawaiian music, and how to perpetuate it. Are, Auntie Myrna, are you hopeful that that same kind of awakening that Eddie had uh, with Hawaiian language and culture, are you hoping that that also happens with people who get to see and dive into this songbook, that they'll also have that awakening as well, whether they're of blood of this place or not? One of the big components in this is education. And we'll be going into that next with teachers and them helping us find the best ways for uh, it to be taught in the schools. But for the general public, we decided that every song that we chose of the 34 songs, it has video, it has audio, the lyrics uh, were all checked. You know, uh, Lily Noy and Kapena both being fluent in the language. And Lily Noy is a fastidious researcher, as is Kapena. And so uh, the people will always get um, the story of the song, they'll get resources. So it's a whole journey. Each, even the charts are on there. Even the charts are on it. And even, and some of them I go, you know, you got to have Auntie Myrna ones too, because <laughs> I'm not good at playing ukulele. I have to tell you uh, my compliments because the website, which is not live yet, I've gotten a chance to glance through it. And really that allows you to go back and reconnect. And also, even though you know the story and you've gone through it, there may be some time that's gone by and then you go back and then you read it in a different way perhaps and perceive it in a different way. So this is a wonderful resource, which is a great tribute to Eddie because that he was like that. Um, so real quickly here, what are you hoping that people walk away with from getting this songbook? I, I really hope that they connect with Eddie's voice. You know, in the songbook, there's a lot of clips of Eddie uh, sharing about his, these special moments of his journey, connecting and learning about Hawaiian music. So there's a lot of interviews with Eddie, but there's also a lot of performances of Eddie singing these songs. And it's cool because the performances are a span of, of the last 30 years of Eddie singing these songs. So you see Eddie singing the same songs, you know, in the 80s and the 90s and the <laughs> 2000s. And it's really cool because he's still singing the same way. Um, so I really do hope that they connect, connect with that. What are you hoping they walk away with? I'm hoping they really get to explore the depth and the breadth of the songbook. For every song, we have lyrics, translations, the story behind the song, video clips, audio clips, bibliography, preface, introduction, educational questions. I hope people that know some of the songs look at those songs because they're going to see layers that they didn't know about. What are you hoping that people find and, and take away from being a part of this songbook? Well, there were three people involved, basically, besides us. The Hawaiian Legacy Foundation, UH West Oahu, um, and Ulu Ulu, the Hawaiian, um, Henry Juni, Moving Image Archive. Mm. And what I hope they take away from this musical journey of Eddie Kamai is that they know that these resources exist and then they get a chance to go through these songs and to love them like we do. And, you know, the writing, um, Lily Noy wrote the stories and every Saturday from 9 to 11 we'd go through all of these things. And I'm just hoping that people will take away the love for this legacy of Eddie Kamai and the Sons of Hawaii, but mahalo for the beautiful music of Hawaii. Okay, if somebody is listening to this and wants more information after May 1st, where can they go? What's the website? HawaiianLegacyFoundation.org or the um, EddieKamaiSongbook.org will take you right to that site also. Finally, um, that's this Sunday, which will be May 1st. What are the times? It starts at noon okay. and goes until 6. All right. 
and uh, there will be all kinds of music. Great groups that played with Eddie, and you know, groups that always played Eddie's music. And there's wonderful musicians coming. I don't know if I can mention them all, mm -hmm. but you know, there's Paul Kim and um, Mike Ava, Analu Aina, uh, Waimanala Sunset Band from when they were high school. Yeah. They played the music. And White Kapuna, you know, David Kamakahi with them, uh, and Ocean Kawili. And he named his group the Grandsons of Hawaii. Oh, because nice. he wants Eddie Kamai and the Sons of Hawaii to live on in that way with the music and with the songs and the films that Eddie has done. And then there'll be some Kani Kapila people will be playing and uh, just coming up on stage and sharing. And the MC is going to be Aaron Mahi. Perfect. Oh, whoops, sorry. Can you cut that? Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be Aaron Salah. Nice. Yeah, Perfect. Aaron Salah. And Monty, I don't know if I'll say his name right. Mukumber? Yeah, exactly. Monty, I figured. Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center, yes. Royal Hawaiian Center, okay. yes. Okay, the Royal Hawaiian Center, and we are so grateful to them for making this lunch available on May Day as part of their May Day celebration. Okay, now, I said final question, but I actually have one more. So there is this Eddie Kamai songbook, but is there more to come? Well, I don't know for sure, but I do know that um, one of the musicians said to me, to me the other day, well, is that song included? It should be. And I said, well, I'm not sure. It was a lot of work. And uh, it took us, you know, three years to come up with this. But I, he said, well, I bet you after this comes up, there might be a volume two. Okay. <laughs> but the three of us are pretty tired right now. We worked really hard. <laughs> Very good. And, and I do have to say, um, after diving in and getting a chance to look at it, um, congratulations on such a wonderful piece of work. But it, it also speaks to the legacy of a wonderful man who still is educating us all and entertaining us all. Mm -hmm.